Good afternoon, everyone. How's everybody doing? All right, good deal. Well, a few of you are awake still. That's good. So uh, thanks for coming in. I'm going to take the next few minutes, and I'm going to be showing off some uh, integration that VMware released with the uh, Grizzly release. This is uh, an updated set of code that will let you run vSphere underneath OpenStack. So if you wanted to deploy vSphere as your compute virtualization layer underneath um, uh, an OpenStack, this uh, new driver will let you do that. So um, first rule of live demos, never do live demos. This is a live demo, right? <laughs> Hopefully it will go better than the HubSpot demo this morning. So I'll keep our fingers crossed. But uh, what I would like to do first is just show you guys uh, real quick what the demo environment looks like. So uh, if you're not familiar with this, this is the vSphere web client. Um, I'm just going to log in here to a vCenter instance, and uh, I'll just show you what, the, uh, what we're using for the demo. This is a live, like I said, it's a live demo that we're running this out of uh, um, a uh, lab inside Palo Alto at VMware. So we've got a vCenter instance. This is a single vCenter instance running the vCenter server appliance, which is a virtual appliance we just deployed onto the infrastructure, right? Inside this uh, vCenter instance, uh, we have uh, a single cluster, and uh, this cluster uh, imaginatively named NVP cluster 01, right? Um, the nice thing about this thing is this cluster is actually um, taking advantage of some of the advanced vSphere functionality like vSphere HA and vSphere DRS, right? So uh, if I look at this cluster, you can see the cluster is enabled for vSphere DRS, which means it's going to do intelligent placement of VMs, both when they're scheduled to run on the hypervisor as well as while they're running, intelligently load balancing them across the cluster. Um, so, you know, you get some heavy workloads, it might move off uh, live migrate VMs off to another host, right? Um, and also enable for vSphere HA so that um, if a host were to fail, then the workloads would restart automatically. Now, it's not to say that you need that for every workload in, in your environment, but you might have a certain class of workloads that you want this functionality um, to be present for, and the fact that it's exposed here with this driver is uh, very nice. So inside um, this particular cluster, we've got um, some number of hosts, we've got some, uh, some ESXi hosts, we have a bunch of virtual machines already spun up already, just take note of that number, 33, Right, there are 33 existing VMs. I just point that out because it's going to change in a minute. So I'll, I'll call you back to that, right? Um, note also that we're taking advantage of a feature called uh, Storage DRS uh, Data Store Cluster. So I have a couple of different NFS data stores that are clustered together into a single data store cluster. And this data store cluster also has uh, Storage DRS and IO metrics enabled, which means that when we place um, virtual machine images onto this particular environment. It's going to dynamically place those images onto the data store based on utilization, space uh, consumption, et cetera, et cetera, right? And that's all done automatically. It's nothing you have to, uh, it's nothing exposed up at the, uh, at the OpenStack level. So I'm just going to jump back real quick here. Now that you've seen a little bit about the environment, I'm going to pop here into the tasks pane, not because it's exciting or um, you know, thrilling, but because we're going to be doing a bunch of stuff and I want you to see these things popping up on the back end um, as we do them. So I'm going to flip over here, and uh, this should look familiar to you. I'm just going to log into Horizon here. And you'll see a pretty standard looking uh, Horizon uh, dashboard screen. We've got some instances running right here, which we'll also be able to take a closer look at right here. These are all instances that are running on that uh, vSphere environment underneath, right? We've got them spread across a couple of different networks. Um, the networking is being provided by um, uh, NYSERA NVP running underneath Quantum. So we're provisioning networks programmatically inside OpenStack. They're being turned up through uh, the Quantum APIs into NVP, and NVP is connecting them onto the ESXi uh, and the vSphere um, infrastructure underneath. Right? I have some uh, one image, an Ubuntu image. Um, uh, just didn't have time to populate a lot of different images in here, but this will do what we need it to do. So what I'm going to do real quick is I'm just going to um, Actually, before I do that, I want to flip over and show you one more thing real quick. So this is a command line, which you probably can't read from back there. And this is running on our um, uh, Nova controller. So I'm just going to show you that this is a real live Ubuntu VM. This is not anything that we've doctored, right? It's actually running uh, the services. The only one you see disabled here is Nova Network, and that's because we're running Quantum. Dan's excited about that, right? <laughs> OK. And then just to give you an idea of um, what this looks like, right, I'm going to show you inside uh, NovaConf that um, the particular driver we're using here is called the VC driver. So you can see right here, 
we have configured Nova to use the VMware VC driver that was released with Grizzly. Um, and that's what allows us to deploy instances to a vSphere environment. It treats a vCenter instance like a Nova compute node and deploys instances onto um, that vSphere uh, instance. So let's actually see it in action. So we're going to go ahead and click right here inside Horizon. And we're going to say that we're going to select from image. I will come up with a very descriptive name. We have our list of flavors here. Let's just deploy a small one. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to connect it to one of these networks. Oh, no, that's the wrong one. I'm going to connect it to this network. And then we'll just click OK. And then you'll see it uh, coming off. It says it's building up networking. Then it's going to move into spawning. right? So we can see this stuff in action. I'm going to flip back over here and refresh the tasks pane. And you will see that another instance has now spun up. So right here, you can see it created an instance called instance-0000042. Right? It's then going through and doing some reconfiguration. It actually uses, uh, in, in vSphere uh, terminology, what we call a, a delta disk. So it copies the uh, image down to the, to the host uh, or to the data store and then creates a snapshot disk to store only the differences um, for that particular instance that you're spinning up. So similar behavior is what you might see on other platforms as well. And uh, I'll refresh this again. So now it shows that it's powered on the virtual machine. So if I just click and go directly to that virtual machine, you'll see that it is booted up, right? Um, so here it is. It's booted up. It's running Ubuntu Linux. It's got an IP address off of the network to which we attached it, right? I can go right here and launch a console and actually log into this guy. All right. and show that it's gotten an, uh, an IP address off the network that we attached it. It's turned up. It's there. And if I wanted to uh, ping another one of these guys, I think this instance is still live. Oops, uh, there you go. See live demo. I had a typo in my command. All right, and this is another instance that was already running attached to the same network. So we show that we turn the instance up. It connects to the network. We've got connectivity. Everything's great, right? So uh, let me run that if config command again. Everybody make note of the MAC address you see right there, especially that last bit, 515E28. What we're going to do is not uh, release my piece here. I'm just going to minimize that uh, console. And I'm just going to flip over here to MVP Manager. MVP is running the networking behind this. Okay, And we are just going to show that that VM is actually attached to a logical switch port um, on a logical switch created by NVP through the quantum API, right? So if we look over here, we can see that this VM right here, this logical switch port, has the VM's MAC address associated with it, right? So that just kind of shows, kind of brings it full circle. We went into Horizon. We spun up an instance. Um, through Horizon, it called quantum to create the logical switch port, attached the VM to the logical switch port, copied the image down, spun up the VM. The VM has connectivity. Everything's cool, right? Cool so far? Yeah? OK. So let's, uh, let's go back and do a few more stuff. Let's uh, spin up another instance real quick. You want to look at the VNC? Uh, sorry, I asked your question again. The v you want to look at the VNC console through the dashboard. OK, hold on one second. Let me get out of here. So uh, I think in this particular environment, the VNC dashboard does not work. That's for this environment, right? Um, and that's just because of the way this thing works. But you can, um, you can get to it through. Um, you know, through any other methods you, norm you would normally get to. So, yeah, yeah. There's some there's some other settings on the firewall on the hosts themselves and that kind of thing to make it work. That's it. So it doesn't work in this environment, but uh, yeah, in a properly configured environment other than my demo environment, you would be able to. <laughs> okay. So I'm gonna go back and we're just gonna spin up another instance real quick. And. Oh, no, I need to attach my network. All right, and same scenario here again. We'll see it'll spin up the spawning task here in Horizon. And uh, I did, uh, well, so I, I could. <laughs> I could have cloned it and given it the same Mac. I turned it to a different network just to show you that we've got the full functionality and, and that we have connectivity and that you wouldn't be able to connect between the two networks, right, which is kind of, Self-explanatory, but again, just showing you this is not smoke and mirrors. This is vSphere being integrated into, into, uh, 
in, into uh, OpenStack, okay? So if I flip back over here onto tasks, we'll see a new instance has been created and powered on, all right? And I could go to this instance and see that it is running again Ubuntu and um, it hasn't finished booting up yet, so you don't see its IP addresses here. Uh, but you'll see that we didn't select a host when we deployed it. It just automatically put it onto dot .24, right? Um, and if we go back, then we may find that some of the other uh, VMs, like if I go back to 42, we may see that 42 was actually deployed on, uh, is actually deployed on a different host. And that's because of the intelligent placement through DRS enabled at the cluster level, okay? Um, all right, so. Um, and if I go back in here and just note we said 10 logical switch ports. Now if I refresh this, we will see 11 logical switch ports, right? Now we didn't log into the console on that one and actually see the MAC address, but you can see that it is turning up additional uh, instances. Yeah, real quick. Right, so he was asking a question why we have a bunch of VMs in vCenter and we don't have them in Horizon. That's because we're actually running a bunch of support structures to make the demo possible as VMs, right? So in a normal production environment, you may not be running your Nova controller as a VM on the infrastructure it's managing, but in this case we are. We've got some of the MVP components that are running virtualized, and then we've got just a bunch of other VMs that we use for other purposes, this lab, yeah. They were created outside of Horizon. It's not a limitation necessarily, it's just that they're created and managed outside of Horizon for other purposes than for this demo, right? Um, all right, so we'll show just a couple more things real quick, because uh, I'm running short on time. <laughs> I'll show you that we can go in here and suspend an instance, right? So it says, okay, I'm suspending the instance. If we flip back over here, and again, look at our tasks pane, then you'll see that it is suspending the instance. This will take a few minutes because it's uh, actually writing memory contents and stuff out to disk, so I'm not gonna sit here and make you watch the spinning bar, but you get the idea, all right? Um, and then of course you can also go in here, of course, and terminate instances, right? It's just to kill them. Same sort of scenario, right? You go in here, we schedule termination of that. If I flip back over now to the web client and refresh, you'll see a series of tasks in here where the machine has been powered off, unregistered out of vCenter and deleted from the data store, right? So it's gone through all the tasks of cleaning everything up. Um, we're getting ready to be done with our suspending, right? Just about done there. And I'm gonna let that finish just so I can show you guys that when we flip back over into Horizon, once this thing shows completed, okay? That last little bit. All right, there we go. All right, so now the machine uh, 42 is suspended. If I flip back over here, we'll see that it shows suspended, all right, okay? And when I go back over here, we'll see that it shows suspended, right? So I was able to suspend the instance, terminate the instance, whatever I need to do. If I wanna go back in here and resume this instance, because I wanna turn it back up again, right? Then again, we just click resume instance and we go back over here, refresh, and this guy will switch to now powered on and back up and running again, just like he was before. I can kill this guy, just like I did previously, terminate this instance, okay? And there he's terminating, when I go over here, we had 11 logical switch ports, if I can now query that, we killed two VMs, we should drop back down to nine. There we go, it just shows the, via the logical ports being terminated and destroyed as the instances are de destroyed from uh, OpenStack um, Horizon. And then in here we now show that there are, uh, the instances that we were uh, messing with are now gone. So, questions? Yes? Can you type in volume? You can. Um, it's, not, uh, it's not exposed in this demo, but yes, you can. Here. All right, yes, other questions? What was the question? Oh, sorry, thank you. Question was, can you attach volumes? Uh, yes, you can attach volumes, it's just not exposed. It, we didn't show it here in the demo because the demo environment didn't have it ready, but you can attach volumes. So, other questions? Uh, subject of same limitations as Cinder currently has. So, if, 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 if this regular OpenStack piece will do it, then we can attach it to that way as well, yeah. Because we're just calling Cinder APIs. All right. Yes, question in the back.
the VNC console. Yeah, of course, you can definitely see it inside vCenter and in a properly configured environment, which our demo environment was not, you can see it at the VNC console inside Horizon as well, yes.